Hello everybody, this is Jaren from MarineAndReef.com. Today we're doing a video about protein skimmers and protein skimmer troubleshooting. Try to help you guys out if you're having trouble with your protein skimmer, whether it's not skimming, skimming too much, if you're wondering if it's working or not, this is going to be the how-to guide on how to make sure your protein skimmer skims optimally for its entire life. If you're wondering what a protein skimmer is, a protein skimmer is a filtration device used in saltwater aquariums, both reef aquariums and saltwater fish only or swim aquariums. The way a protein skimmer works is by using bubbles mixed in a reaction chamber, which is the main body of the skimmer. Those bubbles have waste molecules adhered to the surface. This is kind of similar to if you've ever looked at a lake and see oily film at the surface. Well, it turns out that a lot of those waste molecules and dirt, that oily film type substance, is attracted to an air-water interface. So with the bubbles in the skimmer body, there's air inside the bubble and water outside the bubble, and a lot of those waste molecules actually get attached to the surface of the bubbles. As the bubbles in the reaction chamber attach all that dirty debris, they bubble up and eventually pop, and when they pop, they release all that waste into this dirty, gross collection. Protein skimmers are an excellent way to filter your saltwater tank, and it's what we recommend is the backbone of any saltwater tank filtration system. When you're looking for a protein skimmer, you're going to find a few different kinds. Um, the first kind is what we're going to call the nano skimmer. These are very, very small skimmers, and this Tunzi nano skimmer is one of those. They're designed to fit in the back chamber of an all-in-one aquarium, such as the Coralite BioCube behind me, an Innovative Marine, or a Lifeguard Aquarium. These are great for those applications. However, I will say that generally you're not going to get the same performance as you would out of some of the bigger skimmers. If your tank has a sump, the best option is going to be an in-sump skimmer like this brand new Rosmont skimmer here. These are going to offer some of the best performance, partially because the skimmers themselves can be bigger, have a bigger reaction chamber volume, get more air in there, and do their job better, and partially because they're easier to deal with and have less chance of floods and other issues. If you don't have a sump, but you have a regular aquarium and you don't have a back chamber to put a nano skimmer like the Tunzi, Pangon skimmers are a good option. These reef octopus skimmers that hang on the back are my favorite hang-on skimmers. They're going to sit over the back of the tank just like a power filter and then suck in the water from the tank as well as the air to do the skimming. Now we're going to go over a few ways to troubleshoot whether or not your skimmer is working. The first thing to consider if you're having trouble with your protein skimmer, particularly if it's a new protein skimmer, is that protein skimmers tend to have a break-in period. Now what this break-in period means is that when you have a brand new skimmer, partially because the skimmer's new and partially because new skimmers are often on new tanks, the skimmer is not going to be performing like it normally would once the tank is established and the skimmer is broken in. There's a variety of reasons behind this. First off, brand new skimmers often have a lot of oils and other things on them left over from manufacturing that need to purge off. But also, in new tanks, the conditions are not quite like they're going to be in an established tank. In new tanks, many skimmers don't remove anything at all, specifically because there's not many fish in new tanks. And with not many fish, there's not a lot of waste for the skimmer to remove. Because of this, many skimmers just collect nothing at all. Or conversely, sometimes there's lots of stuff for a skimmer to remove in a new tank. If your sand wasn't rinsed very well and there's lots of sand particles, the skimmer is going to try to suck them all out. Or if you just glued your plumbing together, sometimes the PVC glue and other residues from that new tank can really make the skimmer go crazy. The important thing is to not pass any judgment when you have a new skimmer. Just understand that it's going to take a couple weeks to a month once the skimmer is broken in and the tank has started to go into its normal life cycle versus that beginning phase for the skimmer to perform as it normally would. Now, if your problem is that your skimmer is not collecting anything, there's a few things you can do to troubleshoot the problem. First off, just like before, you want to check the pump itself. The pump is the only moving part of the skimmer, and if your pump is all gunked up and clogged up with the breeze, it may just not be pushing enough water to rise the bubbles enough and collect that waste. The second thing to check is just like before, the air line to the skimmer, which is this line here. Over time, this can get plugged up, and if this is plugged up, it can limit the amount of air so that the reaction is not happening and the skimmer isn't collecting anything. Beyond that, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure our skimmer is adjusted properly. And there's a variety of ways to adjust our skimmer. On this Rossmott skimmer, there's only a single adjustment, and that's with this pipe here. 
by twisting this pipe, we can raise the water level in the skimmer. So right now I'm gonna raise the water level up to move the bubbles higher in the skimmer body. And as this comes up, it's gonna make it easier for the skimmer to collect waste. The one last thing we should note with this is one reason your skimmer could not be collecting anything is because there's nothing to collect. If your tank is very, very clean, there may just be nothing for the skimmer to skim out of the water. And if that's the case, even if you adjust it properly, the skimmer is still working, there's just nothing for it to do. As long as your pump is clean, your air in tank is clean, the water level's where you want it, and there's bubbles, the skimmer is working perfect. The next thing to consider if you have a skimmer is you may experience times where the skimmate the skimmer is collecting is either too light or too dark. So to help you get the skimmate just how you want it, it's important that you understand how to adjust your skimmer. Now there's a variety of different ways to adjust your skimmer, but in general they go into three categories. We're either adjusting the amount of water going into the skimmer, adjusting the amount of water going out of the skimmer, or adjusting the amount of air going into the skimmer. With this Rossmont skimmer, it tries to keep things pretty simple by only giving you a single adjustment, and that's with this standpipe here. And what this standpipe does is when we rotate it, it's changing the amount of outflow from the skimmer. So when I move this skimmer outflow pipe, what it's actually doing is starting to restrict the outflow. And because less water can escape through the bottom of the pipe, the water level in the cup is gonna rise. We're gonna keep on twisting it just a little bit. You can see the water level is raising up here. As the water level raises in the skimmer neck, generally the skimmate you're gonna collect is gonna be more watery or lighter. So if you raise it up, you may get a more tea-colored skimmate, or too much, you may just get water-colored skimmate. If you want to go back down because it's too light and not dark enough, then you'll get the standpoint pipe and twist it in the opposite direction. And in this case, we're allowing more water to flow out of the standpipe. And as more water flows out, the water level drops in the skimmer body, and we're going to get a darker skimmate. If you go down too far, you'll get nothing at all. It'll just all cake around the neck and you won't collect anything. So you can make all your adjustments just on this pipe. Now there are some other ways of adjusting skimmers. With skimmers like this Rossmont skimmer, you can connect the pump to the waiver controller and control the pump speed going in. This is also the case with some of the Tunzi skimmers and Reef Octopus skimmers as well. If this is the case, the faster the pump speed going into the skimmer, the more the water level is going to raise up because you got more water pushing in, and the slower the speed, the more the water level is going to raise down. As you speed up the pump and raise the bubble level up, you're going to get a lighter skim, and as you slow down the pump and lower the bubble level down, you're going to get a darker skim. The last way to adjust your skimmer is going to be by the airflow. The airflow is going to be controlled through a valve on many different skimmers. And this Rossmont skimmer, it completely leaves that out to try to make things even simpler. But in other skimmers, like the Coralife BioCube skimmer, this is going to be your primary adjustment. On these skimmers, generally when you open up the valve and allow more air into the mixture, it's going to lower the skimmer net water level. That's because the pump is sucking in more air and less water. Whereas when you restrict the air going in, it'll start to suck in more water and less air. It'll raise up the water level. So you can use this again to change the water level in the skimmer. As it rises, it's gonna be wetter, more tea colored. As it lowers, it's gonna be darker and more of a coffee color. When you're adjusting your protein skimmer, we usually suggest to people that you want your bubble, bubble level between one third and one half of the way up the cup neck itself. Now with the bubble level here, you're not gonna get anything immediately pouring over, but you can see in this skimmer here, it is starting to push the waste up and out of the neck. Once you have the skimmer adjusted like this, you're going to want to walk away for a few hours, come back, and then you should see some collection in the water. As you can see, we crank the skimmer up a little bit, starting to collect waste, spill over the edges. This is how it's going to collect. Now if you were to leave the skimmer like this all the time, it would actually probably start overflowing, so you'd want to adjust it down. But this gives you an idea of how the waste can travel up the neck and then spill over into the cup as it's collected. If you're going to have your aquariums up as long as I do, and you'd like to have them for a decade or more, it becomes important that the skimmer doesn't just work well on day one, but that it works well every single day it's on the tank. There's a few different tips and tricks you can do to make sure your skimmer lasts and continues to perform well 
over time. The first thing is consider that the only moving part of any protein skimmer is the pump. The pump is the heart of the skimmer and generally any main skimmer related performance issues are going to go to that pump. Because of this, pretty much every manufacturer is going to recommend at least every six months you remove that pump from the skimmer and clean it out. You can do this by scrubbing it with a toothbrush as well as putting it in a bath of vinegar or a citric acid mi mixture. That will dissolve any calcium deposits on it, make sure the pump is still working well, scrub all the gunk off of it so that it's pumping just like it normally should. The second thing you want to do is focus on the water level that the skimmer sits in. This is true for all three kinds of skimmers, whether it's the nano skimmers that sit in the back chamber, the hang on skimmers, or the in sub skimmers. When the water level that the skimmer is placed in changes, it, it affects how the skimmer is adjusted. In general, if the water level is lower, the skimmer is going to have to work harder to pump the water up, and if the water level is higher, the skimmer doesn't work as hard, it can trigger the skimmer to overflow, too low can skim trigger the skimmer if it's not skimming at all because the water level in the skimmer will lower. Because of this, it really helps to place your skimmer in a place with a consistent water level. You can do this by putting the skimmer in a chamber in your all-in-one aquarium that has a weir or a baffle setting the water level. Same thing with your in-sump skimmer. If you have a skimmer chamber designed for that purpose, it'll have a weir to make sure the water level is consistent. And if you have a hang-on skimmer, you may be having a little bit harder time because your tank will evaporate. But adding an automatic top off to that tank can ensure that the water level stays very consistent and that the skimmer doesn't constantly get out of whack. Another place to consider with the skimmer is the air inlet. Over time, air inlets tend to get plugged up and they wind up affecting the performance of that skimmer. To make sure your air inlet is free of any debris and working, you want to occasionally pull the hose off, pull an air silencer off if you have one, as well as the venturi, which is the place where the air hose connects by the pump, and make sure none of those are obstructive at all. If they are, you can use a toothpick to go in there and poke out any obstructions. You can soak them in vinegar to try to dissolve any calcium deposits, and make sure that they're flowing freely and that the skimmer is functioning just like it would when it was brand new and perfectly clean. If you like the information in this video, please go to marineandreef.com and follow the videos and education link. There, there will be a print version of this article if you prefer it in a written format, as well as many other articles and videos on all kinds of aquarium topics for saltwater aquariums, reef aquariums, planted aquariums, and everything else aquarium related. Thank you very much for your time.